Hi folks, welcome to another episode of The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. This is my second interview uh, with my friend Damien Marie Atho. In the first interview, we talked mostly about his path from growing up um, in a conservative home, a conservative Christian home, to becoming an atheist and an anarchist. But in this episode, we talk about how his anarchist views manifest in the way he lives his life. Uh, we also talk about some of the activism that he's done and uh, some of the volunteering and how he went from an activist to an educator and why he views those things as uh, the same project in many ways. There's a, a, at least one video that we talk about in this uh, interview that Damien has done on his channel. I'll provide links for those in the show notes. One in particular of interest might be the one where he talks to a formal axiologist, and I thought it would be really interesting for people to check that out. But beyond that, uh, as usual, thank you to all my patrons. Uh, you make it possible for me to do this show. And if I reach $200 per month, I will start paying my guests. Right now, it's really tough to justify it uh, with the work that I put into each episode. But if I reach $200, then I can put some of that towards paying uh, guests or paying Justin because we are now officially going to be starting Red Reviews again. Uh, we have a tentative date for uh, uh, the start of it. It's going to be after the new year. Uh, so if you want to contribute to me being able to pay my future guests or my co-host, uh, then you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist. Uh, support levels start as low as $1 per month or $1.50 for Canadians. If you can't support me with money, then hit the like button or go and write a review on Apple Podcasts or on Podchaser or some other podcast review site. And make sure to subscribe on YouTube and uh, or also the podcast app of your choice. The more people who are downloading or subscribed, the better. And, may, and that way you also get the... Uh, episodes as soon as they come out and you get a if you hit that little bell or whatever on youtube then you get a notification yeah it's all very cool <laughs> so i'm a little bit behind all the time with producing new episodes uh but all of my interviews are available on twitch.tv slash skeptical leftist and there i do them live there as well as they stay for 14 days uh, so you can make sure to follow me there if you want to keep up to date with all the interviews that I haven't quite finished processing. Feel free to contact me on social media if you have a comment or a question. Or leave a comment on YouTube. The only people who don't get a response are trolls or shitty people. <laughs> but uh, you can use the contact form on my website, uh, skepticalleftist.com, or you can email me at mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. I think that's it for today. On to the interview. All right. Hi, and welcome to uh, The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist, a podcast where I talk to a variety of people to spread critical thinking, progressive politics, and left-wing philosophy. And once again, I'm joined by my friend, Damien Marie, at Hope. Hey. Thanks yeah, for joining me. This time, me. I wanted to focus a little more on my anarchism, because I feel like I didn't uh, get to adequately address that. Yeah, we, we kind of just went through your history and kind of where you, how you got to where you are. Right. Less of what you have been doing. Exactly. So uh, this time also I had to be a little more diligent. I sort of made a script of what I wanted to say, not totally, but just to address things because I feel like it's important because otherwise I can just talk for hours about all kinds of stuff and not. Get <laughs> right. I, I, and not well, land on where you wanted to land on in the first place. <laughs> well, yeah, right. Because I mean, I could sit all sit here and just talk about prehistory the whole time, or I right. could talk about anarchism or atheism the whole time, or I could talk about in my opinion, the human is in the whole time. So I, I, I need, or I can just talk about myself and I mentioned all those, just my whole life my, is so involved. It, 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 it's, it's easier just to do that. Yeah. So I wanted to just uh, address a few things. You know, sure. I'm an anarchist and like most anarchists, you know, I'm not for states and not for borders or nations. I yeah. care about all people and support solidarity with humanity. That's to make it simple for people. Not all anarchists may do that, but I think that's a general most anarchists do. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's kind of, uh, at the core of a lot of anarchism, like maybe you might see different kind of branches. Like, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much cause I don't know every branch of anarchism very well, but well, the so stuff like any, that I've any, read on. Any ones that I would support would be reasonably to me, that kind of stuff. Right. So there may be various anarchist thoughts, but to me personally, I, I don't, agree with something you know ridiculous like nationalist anarchism right 
what the hell is that shit? I mean, it sounds like a damn confusion. Yeah, it seems like a contradiction. Yeah, contradiction, just like saying capitalist anarchists. I'm okay with there still being, you know, an oppressive hierarchy. It just, I want it to be no state. It's controlled. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Yeah, no. Sorry, that's not good. Yeah. So to me, I also want to address, you know, uh, anarchism a little more. So various anarchist thoughts, you know, I realize have different forms and actually address different thoughts or desires in the anarchism struggle as a whole. Right. Because I feel like sometimes people get confused where they'll say I'm a feminist anarchist, which I am, or I'm a queer anarchist or a green anarchist, or even like I say also that I'm a humanist anarchist or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but to me, these are, in a sense, not like different kinds of, of anarchism. Right. Totally. They're like different goals. Yeah, just it, different focus. Exactly. So I feel like it's all part of the sense the anarchist struggle. Yeah. Including yeah. what I also support, which is, um, you know, re- relationship anarchism. Right. You know, I, and I don't do it to, as a, a, some kind of an anarchist dating. I see it more as just my anarchist behavior. Right. Yeah. Like I practice non-dominance in my relationships. See, right. With everyone. <laughs> with everyone. <laughs> yeah. that's a, as what I consider to be just a healthy thing. Yeah, that's right. So I often say that I'm a socialist anarchist, but the biggest reason I do this is because huh, I want to make sure people understand that I am not a capitalist. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Generally, like before we, before it all sort of kind of got all, uh, different theories involved, uh, socialism and anarchism, like socialism was part of anarchism, right? Like that's the original anarchist ideas were socialist ideas. Exactly. So I'm just saying though, I state this clearly. Also, I state this because on the other side, I want socialists or communists to understand mm. I'm still an anarchist. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't support the state either. <laughs> <laughs> because if I just say I support socialism, because also I'm a mutualist, and my mutualist and collectivist, and mutualism and collectivism for me involves more of a, a gradualism towards revolution. In other words, to me, I think we should help right now because people are starving right now, today, mm-hmm. tomorrow, the next day. We, we should be building solidarity right now, not not. 10 years and not some future, you know, utopia, not yeah. saying that we shouldn't go or I don't want a future utopia. I'm saying is I want to help as much as possible right now. Yeah. I want to build systems to, to that are mutualistic and collectivist right now, not mm. waiting for anything to change. Right. Yeah. And that I feel that that is a momentum of the anarchist struggle for change to me. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Um, often, uh, I mean, there are groups or organizations around places around the world that do things that uh, are helpful to oppressed peoples, but they don't all carry the uh, the anarchist label. But many of them have anarchists working within them. Oh, definitely. Oh, to- totally agree with that. And, and so, all I'm trying to say is, though, I don't believe as gradualism as the goal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just want to clarify, I'm a revolutionary. Right. We can change society tomorrow. I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm just saying I'm a gradualist in the fact of that I want all positive change, most positive change to happen as much as possible, as often as possible towards our future goal. Yep. Yeah. Because I, I feel like sometimes people have more of a, and I'm actually, I test, I'm zero utopian socialist. Oh, Zero. yeah. Not yeah. even 1%. <laughs> <laughs> so people try to say, because sometimes I hear people, oh, Damien, you're just idealistic or, you know, or um, something nonsense like that. Like, no, I'm a realist. I'm an axiologist. I know value matters. I know people matter. And you got to build value as much as possible right. in the here and now. Yeah. Yeah. So, mine, I think mine said, uh, like, I do have like uh, almost a 50 50 split between like scientific and utopian. But uh, when it came down to ideologies, utopian socialist was one of my least compatible ones. Yeah. I'm zero. <laughs> Absolutely none. 
Yeah. Well, that's why I want, but, but, but as you notice, you've been around me or not been personally around me, but talking to me, I, I can sound almost utopian because I, my goals are so humanitarian. Right. Right. And, but, and I understand yeah. the deep need for this on, on a world level, not on some state, some border, some this nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, I say I'm a, a socialist, mutualist, collectivist, anarchist who supports anarchist objectives of eco-green anarchism as well as anarcho-naturalism. For me, also including social nudism. I, I've been a nudist a, and as an anarchist. It changed my life. It changed my whole. I've never interacted on such with people on such an equal footing as being a nudist. I, right. I, unbelievable how it is. I'm not saying the nudists are perfect. <laughs> I'm just saying that it's amazing how that fosters and more of an equalitarian collectivist thinking when all of a sudden you, you don't you don't judge people because they all look like bodies and they, all bodies are imperfect or right know, it, right it, it's it and it, being an intersex person too I'll tell you it's the first time that I, I was around people that did not in any way shame me for being intersex. Yeah. completely treated me like normal. So, I mean, that, and that's a big deal because um, for me, my um, my penis doesn't even show. It looks like I have zero penis. And most of the world makes all kinds of jokes about that, right? Right. So, and there's guys there that have like, you know, 10 inches long penis hanging out. And yet right. we interact equally. It, it's yeah. the coolest, I'm telling you, it's, 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 yeah. Anyways, I don't want to go on. And on about <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just making a comment that it's the, it's the one experience that I realized. Wow. Now I get why it, this is what's added to some anarchism. Right. Because I can see you do this, you immediately go, okay, I get it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Like, cause it, it does. It, it uh, removes class. In, it does. You know. It does faster than anything I have ever seen. Yeah. Now, you remove clothes and it telling you and socially interact in a, in a also too, a lot of people have this wrong opinion. Most nudism is actually not sexual. Right. So you interact with people without class in a non-sexual way <clears throat> and it really impacts you. I mean, yeah. it, at least it, I totally did me. I, in fact, I lived I at two nudist resorts. Seriously, I moved in and lived at two nudist resorts, one a year each. Wow. I mean, I, and to me, truly, that was some of the best time of my entire life. Unbelievable. That's interesting. Another thing, too, is in those environments, there's a lot of older and younger together, and it act the same. Right. Every, I, I'm, it's amazing. <laughs> I'm just saying that all these different class bullshit is just gone. Older, younger, attractive, not attractive, race, religion, you know, uh, it, it just, it, it's the only only place that I've been where that many class things just were not as oppressive as a yeah. general society. Anyways, I'll, I'll go on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I can talk, like I said, I can talk about stuff like that. <laughs> how wonderful that is. Well, just to give people a picture that, that I know they had thought times they had this, they oh, nudist camp or something. I mean, you, you're wrong. So <laughs> just there you go. Fucking yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah. So other objectives I support though, like I already said was relationship anarchism. And I, I hold that for me personally as just a general persuasion. Mm -hmm. I also am non-monogamous, but that's not really a big thing of my relationship with anarchism. My relationship with anarchism, I do with everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How I want to treat a bum on the street, how I want to treat you, how I want to treat an enemy, a friend. It makes no difference. I want it all to be relationship with anarchism as right. much as possible. And I'm also really big on queer anarchism. anarchism. A because I I believe that's a seriously oppressed you know thing lesbians gays bisexuals transgender you know um, even people that don't understand or know you shouldn't have to know I really feel like this bullshit like everyone's got to pick a thing or whatever and yeah. or me being intersex the fact that the bigotry against me being that or how much society doesn't want to acknowledge it I'm yeah. also a feminist anarchist because I I think that. Feminist understanding is kind of like anarchism, not all of it, but some of it in general, because it really looks at how the whole system is doing this to you. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, toxic masculinity is a problem for men, even though it's kind of explained well in feminism. 
So that's why I don't believe that this manis movement or something. Right. It's not needed. Yeah. <laughs> First that's off, right. feminism addresses that. And if we look at the, the society, I'm sorry, it's not men being dramatically oppressed. It's, no. it's like a laugh when people are like straight pride. Yeah. Do you know why there's gay pride? <laughs> they yeah. do not. They do not understand. I think you're not getting it. It's a question. <laughs> yeah. It's like me saying I'm not. I, I, I'm proud to be intersex. I'm not super proud of it. What I'm proud is that I'm okay to be me, and I'm equal to Corey. Yeah. Who may yeah. not be intersex. You know what I'm saying? That that's the pride. It's not. It's it's the removal of shame. The difference, like like saying like black pride doesn't bother me as much as someone saying right pride. Well, black exactly. pride sounds like a good thing. They should be proud because society has tried to shame blackness. Yeah. White pride, this is bullshit, you know, forcing the system that's already toxic. Yeah, to me. exactly. Yeah. So, and this goes back to my supporting humanist anarchists. Because mm-hmm. to me, it's important because I see it as, a, once again, like the relationship anarchism for me. My humanist anarchism is a general thing. I want to act in a certain way. I want every behavior if possible to be humanistic, to be caring, to be thoughtful, to be kind as much as possible. It's not my nature. I'm a high functioning sociopath. Speaking of that, so people understand, I took a test in, in college. We had to take this test because you had to basically show that you could be a counselor. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, if you were a total psychopath, it's 1 to 20. Anyways, it's about empathy, how much empathy you not, – not like you say, but on this test, they could figure out how much empathy you really show. Based on your but, responses to certain kinds of situations. Right, because or, it should be. A normal person is like somewhere between 7 and 9, goes to 20. Now, if you're okay. on either side, 20 or 1, you really shouldn't be a counselor. 20 means that you are going to latch on to people that talk to you. And you're going to go home and be devastated. You're going to have right. emotional breakdowns. You're taking you're on their shit way too much. Struggle on other people so much, you're going to be doing more harm yeah. than just doing good. Same thing. You really don't want someone to be a one, right? Because a one is like a total sociopath, psychopath, in the in the point that they just don't care. Because there's different levels, also. Right. It's not like it's an all or nothing. Even with sociopaths or psychopaths, you can have that in a sense, ideation or, or, or personality trait, and it not be as extreme. Everyone is not equal. Right. In, even in mental illness. So anyways, so I told you, seven and nine is normal people, okay? It's considered general average or whatever. Okay. Okay. At least the ones that go into counseling because they have to take this test. So the general people that go into counseling and take this test are from seven to nine. So one chick in our class was a 19, Okay. They actually way too empathetic. (laughs) Well, they talked to her and I and she didn't last. So she left. I don't know. I don't personally like once again, they were being empathetic and didn't tell us, hey, we kicked her out. Right. I don't know if they talked to her and then she realized this is too much for her to do as a job. But and then I got a three. They said, wow, Damien, you just barely make it over the edge of the being able to be a counselor. Right. And not be abusive. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like you're not dangerous. (laughs) But you're certainly not. He goes, wow, this good counseling is going to be super easy for you. I bet you people could tell you all the worst horrors in the world and you can just go home and not, not even think about it. Right. Go, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I mean by high functioning. So people right. grasp what I mean by high functioning sociopath. All sociopaths are not the same. First off, because it's 40% of people that have, are sociopath have been, there's a test that, um, showed that they have extreme child abuse. I had right. extreme child abuse. As fo- I also lived around gangs and violence. And yeah, I, I felt unloved and, and, and just abandoned. I had yeah. medical neglect, which is a, a, a only thing. I think it's 5 or 10% of, of uh, abuse kids get. So I had like an extreme, you know, thing that is even normal for abuse. Right. And I had sexual abuse. I, I had all kinds of things. So but the physical abuse, I, I mean, this, I told you before, but I'll say to you, think people, is I, w- I was beaten by my father with a two-by-four where he broke my tailbone. Mm-hmm. In fact, I tried to get the, the medical the people, right, to, to, to understand this, and they kept doing these tests. Oh, I don't think that's what it is. I'm like, I'm telling you that's what it is. <laughs> right. Right? And it hurts. I cannot do sit-ups. I, it hurts sometimes to sit 
and um, I have to sit a certain way or a certain kind of comfortable chair or whatever, you know, or it freaking hurts. Yeah. And um, I can't lay on the ground, you know, like just flat on my back because my tailbone will hit the ground, at least whatever, it's broken. So they finally, this one doctor, he, because I kept pushing it because I, I know it hurts. I'm not bullshitting, you know. And so he finally did a, like an X-ray or, or MRI, not an X-ray, MRI from the side. Because they were doing like from the back. It's hard to tell. Right. But they did it from the side, and he saw that it's bent in. And the only way it could be bent in is if something smashed the shit out of it. Right. Anyway, so then he like comes to me, and he goes, I want to apologize. And he was almost crying. He goes, I want to apologize mm. that I didn't believe. And, um, but that's like most of my life. I feel like, you know, I've had all these struggles. But I realize I, I'm not the thing abuse made. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can choose to be different. I have a lot of belief in myself, but that's because I made a choice. I chose to be more than just a sociopath, just not to care. Right. I realize it's not good enough. It's like someone saying, well, I like sex and I feel like raping. Yeah, but you shouldn't rape anyways. I don't give yeah. a fuck if you want to. Yeah. I don't care if it's if your biggest impulse. Don't do it. Be a credible human being. And so that's what I've strived to do. And that's also why my anarchism is, is so important for humanism. But I also tell people, too, I need to remind my sick head that this is a big deal to be humanist, to be caring, to not hurt people. Because if I don't focus on that, it's not that hard for me to go into feeling angry or, or whatever. Like I've, I've right. said before, for me, I feel like I've lost the privilege to be angry. Mm. If I get too angry, I know that I'm being unhealthy. I need to check myself. Because I can justify at what a lot of people do. They're like, well, right. they get angry. Like, I remember this one uh, chick says she was a pacifist. Oh, I know, totally nonviolence. And then she told me, yeah, and my boyfriend cheated me. I punched her in the face. I'm like, wow. <laughs> it sure didn't take much for you to be violent if you wanted to do it. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so to me, when I say humanist anarchist, I mean no gods, no masters, but also do no harm. And more than just not doing harm, to actually strive to do good. That, that's a big, I'm going to be a good human. Right. And, and I, I tell people before, like, you know, they go, oh, what's your, all your stuff and your things so confusing and so much stuff. Yeah, I make it simple for you. I have an easy game. I want to be a good human. To me, that is to be an anarchist because how could I be better than someone else? It is to be kind because being harmful is not good. Being toxic is not a benefit to society. Right. And that doesn't mean I think that we shouldn't do direct action and throw paint on on, on a stupid painting. Right. <laughs> right. That's not, not <laughs> or, or or burn a police car. I mean, I'm not saying go burn police cars, but if you do and you want me to feel a lot of sympathy, it's not going to happen because it's not a human being. Yeah, that's right. If you say that that, that you're, you're you know killing human beings, now that is way more important. To me. Right. Yeah. Because I understand axiology, a human has higher value. Yeah. A police so, car is just a cop car is just a cop car. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do it, but uh, you will never see any post by me going, you know, how dare you do that? You know. Right. Right. But, or they go, it's a billion dollar painting, and I go, yeah, and they wipe the soup off. Well, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, and also, why is that painting worth that much? How well, it, how like, fucked up is it that a painting is worth a billion dollars, right? Like, <laughs> well, it's really fucked up because to me, I even as an artist, I don't even think it's that great of a painting. <laughs> right. Not only that, it's like all muted one color, kind of yellowish, like an ugly shit yellow. Or whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's not even like like Starry Nights. Now, I'd be a lot more mad about that because that's a great painting, right? Because it's stimulating. It's but that one, the flowers. <sighs> please. But even if it's starry nights, you know what? <laughs> I'm still not. Things are things. Yeah. They're not people. Yeah. That's right. Anyways. So, and I'm, I'm also a very strong atheist. I mean, the, the zero room for theism bullshit. I'm not agnostic. I, I in fact, I, I'm anti-agnostic, not the people, but just the concept of that we should doubt something that there's no reason to even start believing in the first place. Right. There's not enough information to even start to doubt. <laughs> okay. It's just nonsense. Doubt should be just like facts, like built on something. Uh, if there's nothing to build it on, guess what? I don't fucking doubt. Right. Yeah. And so, but I want to say too, that I'm not for forced atheism. 
Mm-hmm. I'm not for no state atheism either. You know, I, I, my anti-theism and, you know, and my anti-religionism, they're an opposition to the ideas. Right. I'm not against people. Yep. And, and my position, you know, like I said, is not for forced uh, uh, atheism, anti-theism, anti-religionism. But instead, I fight in the sense to the, expose the lies of theism mm-hmm. and expose the harm of religion. I'm for secularism. I'm for freedom of and from religion. Yeah. Freedom of meaning you can choose to be whatever you want. I don't attack. I don't attack people. They say, "Well, I'm this." I don't immediately start attacking them. Right. Like okay, that, but you're that, but... that. I shouldn't have to be living under your beliefs. Like I said, I'm a nudist. Like, oh, now you're going to outlaw nudism everywhere. Right. I can't do that. What the fuck you? Or, or abortion? <laughs> yeah. Fuck you! Don't have abortion then. Yeah, and don't right. tell other fucking people what to do. Yeah, exactly. So, so um, in this in uh, in this way, like you've done uh, some direct action and some uh, activism yourself. Oh, a- absolutely! In fact, that's what I started with because I didn't start with do- doing a Facebook account. I started doing uh, direct action in two thousand six. As soon as I became an um, an atheist, that's why I always laugh too. And people like I think you've said before. I don't know how you judge one thing as a flawed system and then just limit it there. <laughs> you only judge gods and theism and religion, but you don't judge like governments and, you know, and right. hierarchy structures or anything. I, I don't know how you do that because let me tell you, for me, as soon as I became an atheist, I started becoming an anarchist. Right. Cause it just, and, start, and, and I, I wasn't told that direct action was a good thing or even new people did it. I just knew that I needed to do it. Right. Yeah. I, I felt responsible. All of a sudden, I was like, holy fucking shit. Gods are fake. The government's fucked. People are being over other people is fucked. I'm like, this. Uh, uh, my whole, but the problem is, for me, I guess, and I guess maybe not other people, I don't know, but my values changed. Right. I Before 2006, if you asked me what I thought about gay people, I would say I don't agree with it. I'm right. against it or whatever. After 2006, when, when my values changed, I was hella supportive. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it rock and rocked everything. It didn't just change, well, you know, I think theism isn't true and uh, religion is harmful. I was like, holy shit, all my whole life is wrong. Everything I'm about <laughs> to feed was wrong and everything I thought was harmful. My behaviors were harmful. Fuck, I need to be kind. I need to, ch- I need to change everything. Holy right. shit. So that's why I said I, I really and I heard people before. What does politics have to do with religion? I don't know what <clears throat> your anarchism doesn't have to do with atheism or vice versa. Right. To me, I uh, um. So to go to yeah. go into my my um things, you know, I was like I told you, I was right wing Christian until I was thirty five when I turned atheist in college. Right. Not because anything you told me or because I wanted to sin or some dumb bullshit, but because I saw facts in two religious classes. So, but it wasn't until about 41, you know, that I was told that my thoughts were anarchism. It wasn't until about 42 when I realized I was a socialist. But before that, like I said, 2006, I started doing direct action right in my college because I turned mm. atheist in college. And I guess, you know, in a sense, anarchists and socialists do. I just didn't know those words. Right. <laughs> or direct action or anything. I just started realizing I started hijacking my college. I started forcing them to learn about all kinds of stuff and politics and everything and tr- being good. Like if they said, okay, you have to do uh, this, uh, uh, you know, project and it has to be on something, you know, about a client and their needs and how you're going to help them. And I'm like, okay, I have a gay client who's a uh, Muslim and becoming an atheist and uh, they are turning trans and their their parents are kicking them out, so they're homeless. And you know what I'm saying? Like I would add every freaking thing I could to make every class every, and I would try to find as much information to support what I was doing, and then you know defend it and stuff. I I, I was like massively wanting to do activism. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just it put like a fire under me. A that I, that I I felt two two things. A I felt like. I, I was 35. I felt like I had wasted my life. Right. For yeah. fucking nothing. <clears throat> I had toiled under capitalism in a sense and, and under belief of theism. And I had been hateful and uncaring and hurting people. 
And I was like, I, I need to make up for my fucked up life. I, I need I need to make amends to the world. Right. That was one of the feelings. I, I, I just, and then I, I thought, if you understand and you even care a little, how can you not feel a requirement to help? Not right. even a need, but a fucking requirement. Yeah. And so like, I just started. Like a duty. A duty. I just started helping. Yeah. And so I started helping homeless. I started helping kids because I felt I, I spoke at college, uh, not at colleges. I spoke at um, the junior high and some elementary schools about, you know, not getting into gangs, not getting into, you know, drug lives and about being a better person and not, not, you know, violence and stuff. I started wanting to help like as many people as I could right now. Right. And so I, I started um, like, um, donating my time. I, I, I worked at inner city thing, helping um, kids, you know, learn uh, schooling and stuff. And um, for free, I just donated my time. I started helping out. Right. And, uh, the reason I actually left was not because I didn't like it or the kids didn't still need help. Was I was there a few months, but uh, someone did something that sexually is inappropriate to me and broke mm. the rules of the um, the group. And the group was uh, a religious one, a Catholic one that I was helping at. By the way, I told them everything I was openly. I thought right. they weren't even going to let me work there because <laughs> I'm like, they're like, uh, so uh, what kind of uh, Christian are you? I was like, well, actually. I'm an anti-religionist and an yeah. atheist and an anti-theist and an anarchist and a socialist. And they went, oh, okay. <laughs> no one's ever said that, you know, in a sense. Um, this was later after I, uh, uh, this is probably, I did that, I think, at 45. Just so people can know I'm not, I'm all over the place. But <laughs> I was just saying that I started doing stuff in 2006. Just so they understand. I did a lot of stuff for a this while. This particular instance is, yeah. Later. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying. I just want to make sure that you grasp what, what I'm saying. So I did. I, I, when I was in college, I did all activism, and I and I and I dropped out of college after seven classes because I just started really getting disillusioned with with college and with psychology. I, I could do really well. I mean, I was phenomenal in, in, in psychology. I, in fact, just one guy complained that it was or not. Well, two women complained that it wasn't fair to have to take classes with me because I was so gifted. It made them all feel, you know, inferior. Oh, geez. And they said this to the teacher in front of everybody. I'm like, wow, that's an inside voice thing. I would, I would never have told anyone that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people, people sometimes blow me away. They're like, wow, I, and I'm the sociopath and you guys act in ways. I'm like, really? Anyways. But, um, this other guy in me, right. I, I took this test, this midterm test, and uh, I um, did it in 15 minutes, the fastest it's ever done in the history of the school. And the, the teacher thought I had not – he looked to make sure I did both sides. Right. Was, he thought I was lying. I said, I'm done. He goes, you barely even got it. How did you read all that fast? <laughs> I said, oh, I, once I saw the answer, I knew it was the answer. He goes, you didn't look at the other answers? I go, why? If I already know it's the answer. Yeah. So, um, and they thought, oh, you're going to fail and stuff. You don't care about your grades and you didn't even study. And I go, yeah, it's true. I studied a little bit, eh, not, not a lot, but I mean, to me, it was all, it all seemed common sense. I mean, there's a few things you got to know the particulars, right? you know, their way of, it's like anarchism. There's different ways of talking or, or socialism, you know, you talk and like the proletariat or something. If you don't know that word, right. you know, but yeah. once you understand what it means, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, or, or a Borgies or whatever, you know? Yeah, you understand that that to me it's a capitalist. So I mean, once you understand, so that it, maybe it's a lot of a technical stuff, but the but the theme, I understood mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very well. Most of the stuff, uh, either at level that they were at, close to it, or above, even sometimes that what they were saying, I was better, right? And it was you could tell I was gifted. I was blowing through this stuff, you know. Anyway, so um, I got a ninety five percent doing it faster than anyone and you had two hours to do the test what there's three I think it's, i'm sure it's two <clears throat> anyways this the other guy right he does it to the almost the minute right gets a hundred percent but it took him long as hell right. and the teacher um told him you know isn't that great he got a hundred percent he goes yeah but i wish i was damien <laughs> he goes damien <laughs> Damien was outside talking to people this whole time. And he goes, and I've had to be here struggling, sweating just to do this. He goes, I can see that Damien's a natural and I have to work at it. He was feeling all shameful. 
And I said, well, just because I can do it fast doesn't mean that we don't need people that, that, that you know, take time to think about things. I mean, I right. was like, I, I, once again, I feel like these people are, what's wrong with you? Don't you realize we need everyone? Yeah. Yeah. You, you're forgetting that you also have a value here. And the fact that it took you a long time isn't a negative thing in the way that you I'm imagine like, it. <laughs> what if and what if we work together? Right. That's why I like working with you. What if we work together? Then we're better than we both could be individually. Exactly. And how is that a bad thing? Yeah. Anyway, so because people think I just go, oh, man, it's so selfish centered and everything. I'm like, oh, God, society yeah. is just so toxic. But so it was, it was all that and, and, uh, and their DSM and stuff. And I, I, to me, I see that people are experiencing symptoms more than that's who they are. Right. Like when I say a sociopath, it doesn't mean like I have to be that way. It just means that I have to fight that tendency in myself. Mm -hmm. So it, just like if someone you know, says they're schizophrenic, I don't believe they are the schizophrenia more than someone with, you know, in a sense that is, you know, cancer is the cancer. Right. Yeah. No, it's that's right. It's an illness, <laughs> right? That you you can but, treat but, in but, various but, ways. And but it's our thinking. We think of and I hear people like, oh, that person's a psychopath or whatever you're you're acting more like it's a thing right instead of people yeah and so i i, I try to um that really so that, that that started and i started thinking maybe i should get into social work okay before i dropped out in fact i started uh to get into that i just so much school and stuff and i went you know i just need help now and that's like i said i started you know going and helping kids i started you know uh, going to and uh, I, I was working with this one in uh, Washington, safe. Um, okay, that, that has to do with uh, helping the homeless and helping people that are you know can't aff have homes and then they can't afford them, and then staying there, not letting people kick them out where they even laid in the street and so oh, they wow. couldn't bring bring moving vans to push them out or you know or or you know doing stuff to the police cars or getting in their way so that they can't do stuff or yep. whatever. That's awesome. Anyways. So a lot of direct action, and and um, they didn't even say that they're like anarchists, or they they just they just felt that you just help, right? That's my opinion too. You just help. Yeah. What do you need? You good person. Yeah. Good you don't have to have help. the label to help. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, but and, and like you said too, it probably if we ask most of them, I'm sure there's a lot of anarchists besides you know me in there. Right. Because obviously that's inspired by a lot of you know direct action kind of stuff and mutualism, but so. It, and, and I started giving money to homeless. I, I would see people on the street. I would just give them cash. Yeah. Yep. And I'm not making them beg and stuff or hold a sign. I would just help people. If I, if I legitimate and um, I would give them food and clothes. And I and I started um, helping out at food banks and stuff. Just started really. I, I felt, like I said, another thing, too, that I did, that um, I would stand there and talk to people that are homeless as human beings mm -hmm. on this one guy you know he started crying because he said people he lives under the bridge and he said people you know treat me as the guy lives under the bridge and i said you're just another person to me yeah you know and, and I, I i just that's important too i feel like everybody always feels like it's a money thing or it's it's uh you know give them drop off food and you can just leave right but you're forgetting these are human beings yeah we need social interaction. Just like I told you before, you take people, I learned this in, in college, that if you take people and you like say put them in a in a cage and isolate them and beat them and rape them and stuff, then they become very non-human. They're really psychologically, even if they had no psychological problems, they're gonna leave with some psychological problems. Yeah, yeah. I think too whether or not they started that way. I think two people forget like that the diff the separation between the guy who lives under the bridge and you isn't as far as you imagine it. Like it's a lot closer and, than it is a me and a millionaire. That's right. <laughs> Any of us could be the guy living under the bridge tomorrow if things go wrong. Like, <laughs> like but I'm just saying, people forget how important it is for us to treat them human. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's me. I, I thought I wasn't doing anything. I thought they're just talking to him, yeah. and he cried because I was talking to him like a person. Yeah. And I thought, man, that almost made me cry. Yep, that's fair, for sure. May I never forget what it's like to not be treated like a person. Yeah, for sure. May I never make anyone feel like I don't treat them like a person. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it's messed up to uh, to treat people like they don't matter, or to ignore their humanity when you're 
just walking yeah, like by. Like I said, we call them homeless when it's really the unhoused. It's it's a societal's failure. Yeah, I don't see it as this the homeless person. The person without means is not the the person that's somehow a predator. Right, they're the victim. Yeah, that's right. In a just society, how could there be such things yeah. as homeless? No, there can't. And so that's where you know, like I said, I became more socialist because. Uh, a, I just think I already kind of was, but you know, I realized the distinction <laughs> it, that I, I was this something that needed to do this stuff, right? Yeah, and, no, and but also it, it goes in. I realized too that the problem is religion, bit, largely. Mm-hmm. And religion makes us believe that we are already good people. I'm a Christian. I'm already a good person. Right? You do the same. Fuck no, I'm, I'm saved. Yeah, I go to church well, every Sunday, good. so I'm doing my thing. Yeah, I'm good. Right. So, and I, well, I'm, you get my point. I'm not saying there's not good Christians. I'm just trying to say that, but that mentality hijacks your 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 uh, need, you know, to actually be a good person. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. It's, and so I saw that, and I saw that in counseling. They would have tons of stuff about religion and nothing about atheists. Hmm. And then um, I even my I have a video where one of my um, classes i took uh the teacher is telling uh, t- saying oh well you know everybody's spiritual and i said yeah that word means nothing to me so how would you relate to me as an atheist if i was a client and you're telling me i have to be spiritual and that word means nothing to yeah, me that's right then still te- he goes well you could be a uh, spiritual too i goes you're not even listening and the, other <laughs> counselor, the other counselor that was doing there was two of them doing the discussion and the other counselor goes, wow, you're not even, you know, doing that, Tim. Or I can't remember what he said exactly, but something like that. Like, you know, he got it, what right. I was saying. In a <laughs> sense, he's being abusive because he's not caring about the client. He only cares about his beliefs. Right. He's got his rigid, this spirituality is a thing that everybody is. And if you can't. There you go. <laughs> and, 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 and forcing that on yeah. him. But even though he's trying to do it in a hippie, kind of, well, you know. You're, I still believe you are. Yeah, I don't care. This is this is for my, my benefit, or is it for yours? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Am I here to validate your belief systems, or are you here to to help me work through my stuff? Right. Yeah. You know, so things like that though started really bothering me in school. Like I said, once again, it was direct action. I said that what it was right in the video, and they were doing it live across the whole world. And so I outed myself like I did all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I. I <laughs> I, I out of myself, like I said, the biggest reason was because I felt it's important. It's like right. when I talk about being intersex. It's not because I somehow I get some benefit from it. In fact, the exact opposite. But saying it is important because it is, to me, a form of direct activism. Being out about who I am is a big deal. Well, that's like uh, like the, the, the atheist community has for a long time had that uh, Ask an Atheist Day. And like uh, there's lots of things uh, that – Say, like, I'm an out atheist. You right. can ask me whatever you want, and I can talk to you. Or they'll have – atheists will go to churches and say, like, ask me anything about being an atheist. Why am I an atheist? Right. But I've also gone to those right. kind of things. I did a lot of street activism. I, I, I sent you so a few uh, pictures of the yeah. activism. Some not in all of it. I just – a little bit because I don't even know where all my pictures are. But And I also had done a lot of stuff. I didn't take pictures. In fact, like when I worked at the inner city thing – um, for months with the children, you could not bring in your phone. Right. Yeah. Which makes sense because so, those kids. You know, because they, yeah. they, these are, these are, you know, vulnerable children and they don't want any kind of bull crap. Yeah, that's right. So when, I mean, I'm not saying, so it's not like I have pictures or like when I went to Mexico, I, 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 I uh, sent you one blurry picture because once again, they did not want us to go there and basically, you know, take a bunch of pictures of kids. Right. Which is I mean, fair. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I mean, I mean, it makes sense, but so, but I, I also felt it was important because I want to inspire others to go and do this. Right. Yeah. Not because I want to brag, hey, look what I did. I wasn't that cool. I want to go, here's something that is important and we all should be doing it. Yeah. We all should be doing as much as we can. It's hard. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. That, but speaking of the atheism, so I, I atheism stuff, like my, one of the pictures I have, uh, which I didn't give you, says, you know, um, I'm holding a sign. And it says, it's my first a- atheism uh, in public event, actually. Okay. And it says, I'm good without God, are you? Hmm. That's all it says. It's a question mark, right? And uh, 
and on my shirt, they were mad. They didn't even want me to sit with them because on my shirt, I have red and black <laughs> anarchist flag oh, geez. <laughs> on my, on my shirt. And I have this big, you know, sombrero hat, but they didn't like because they felt that I was making it political. And I'm like, I didn't even say anything. Right. I'm just wearing the shirt. Yeah. Wearing the shirt was too much. Yeah. And I just thought right there, like I was saying before, I don't get how if you're challenging systems, how you wouldn't. But, you know, I bet you if I said Democrat or Republican, you know, or whatever, or or pro-America or something, I, I oh, don't yeah. think. That, yeah. If it's well, just an American flag, it's fine, right? <laughs> well, right. In fact, I've I've held American flags. I didn't bring it. Someone else brought it. I just picked it up because hmm. I felt that. Um, yeah, I support that everyone has a right and stuff. I support freedom, and, and but I don't feel like that they they even allow that, especially because they'd be like, "What are you doing to public as an atheist?" And I'm like, "Oh, really? Isn't that America's value?" Hmm? To uh, the same thing about political. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a specific political party that this flag is supposedly connected to? <laughs> oh, it's not supposed to be. <laughs> really? Hey. But you get what I'm saying. So, yeah. I, I once again, I I tried because I feel well. To me, first off, flags are just nothing. They don't mean anything. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't make a big deal about always having a flag. Not that they, not that they can't. But my my point is my use. And you picture you see me with American flag, which is not anymore, but. My, some of the activism I did, I think two or three of them have American flag. It's really because I was being an asshole about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> not, not because I was being fucking gung-ho pro-American. Right. More like, I'm an American. I can do whatever the fuck I want. And you just need to realize that if you support America, I don't understand how you don't support that. I was thinking, uh, like, sort of to touch on the atheist and po- politics thing. Like, uh, we just had a chat on your sh- your channel with uh, right. Skeptic Nikki uh, right. uh, from her U- channel is Beat the Cult. Um, right. And what the the first comment I saw was because uh, she's a, a black lesbian atheist oh, yeah, and yeah. she's bringing that perspective to the atheist community. And the first comment I saw was somebody saying uh, what uh, being a black le- woman has nothing to do with atheism. And – I didn't comment it, but it's, it's one of the, it's, to me, that's the kind of thing that pushed me out of the atheist community was because if you want to have a community, you have to acknowledge that people have diverse identities and they have, they come from different perspectives and you have to have the room for that. As soon as you start saying, well, that identity has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Well, no, you're just ignoring their perspective. <laughs> Which is actually funny because the, 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 the one of the first sl- slogans for the women's rights movement is no gods, no masters. Right. <laughs> so saying it has nothing to do with it. I don't think you're even educated in history. Right. Right. Let alone, I didn't say anything to him because that's a kind of moron that on my, my, my YouTube, I just don't even, even acknowledge. Yeah, no, that's fair. And someone else said they agree with everything, but I need to lose weight. I'm sorry. I've had a, a crippling uh, um, disability and I've had a fucked up life and a lot of emotional and psychological uh, stress. And I was also starved as a kid. Yeah. Fucking starved, not given fucking food. I had to go broken my own house and steal food, broken the neighbor's house and steal food, would go to friends' houses and I would steal food from my friend's house. Stick a you know peanut butter jar under my arm and walk out. Mm. Go in into their their freezer in the garage and take a steak or a, or a, or meat or or bread or something. I would steal food. Yeah. So at first I you don't even know my experience. Don't fucking tell me what to do. And also my weight has gone up and down depending a lot of times on how fucking much I'm disabled. Yeah. Like I I stopped being disabled for about I my my foot nerve damage. I, I I'm disabled. Um, for like maybe a year, can't walk, mm-hmm. can't put any weight on my foot. It fucking burns and hurts. It's terrible. And then all of a sudden it's fine. And then I have to, of course, because I haven't walked in a while, I can't walk very good, but eventually it gets back to normal again. Right. And I have no idea how long it's going to last. Month, year, don't know. The way that's that's how nerve damage is, right? Like it's unpredictable. Right, so and then all of a sudden, either a month, week, year, I don't even know how long I'm going to be down. A yeah. year and a half, I don't know. And, and so all the like, like when I was doing some activism, all these activism events, I want these friends. I saw couldn't go outside no more, couldn't do anything. Mm. 
And so, it, and then I, I, I'm like laying in bed and hurting all the time. And I gained a hundred pounds doing that. Not because I'm just, just desire to be overweight. So I feel like they, they, they tried these moral things. And I also think if someone was, this is what about your health? Oh, do you say that to people to smoke? Everyone that smokes, you walk up and say, what about your health? Yeah. Well, and the, the thing is, uh, the evidence just doesn't support actually that uh, weight and health are uh, negatively correlated. Uh, <laughs> there's there's unhealthy people at all weights, and there are healthy people at all weights. It's just how. <laughs> well, tr- well, yeah, I, I'm, uh, my point would be that once again, I like to buy what they're selling, even if it is true <laughs> that I'm going to die in five days. Right. Don't tell me the fuck how to live. Yeah, that's right. And also, certainly don't start with that bullshit without asking how my life was. People always ask, like me, like somehow I'm just desire to be. I have had a fucked up life. So don't act like, you know, like, like, like even she was surprised. You know, I was a street kid. I've been shot at. I've been, I've been jumped by a gang when I was going to a school event. Yeah. For some of it was my fault too. But still, I mean, are you in places where you can make one little mistake and all of a sudden you're jumped, you know, by 13 people? I mean. Not very often. I, 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 I had to fight in my front yard, you know, I, I, with, with three kids and I picked up the, the rake, whatever I was in, and started hitting them with it. I had to defend myself. I mean, did, did they live in under extreme violence? I mean, anyways, I don't want to go yeah. into that. I'm just making a comment that everyone's acting like their life is the same. Right. I grew up in Southern California. I don't know what it's like to live where you're constantly safe. Right. I think that's, that's back to back to anarchism, right? Like that's part of it is that we have to acknowledge that everybody has value and different experiences and recognize that their life has a context to it. The place they're living in has a context that led them to that point. So if somebody is say living under a bridge, they didn't just decide right. to live under a bridge. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. But, but here's my thing too, though. I want to be a person that even if you decided that, I still Yeah, do. absolutely. Yeah. Even even if, and I'm not saying every every person who's overweight, it's because they have some, you know, terrible, like, nope. emotional problems and all kinds of fucked up shit that happened to them in their childhood. Oh, speaking of which, about, about fucked up, right? The school, okay? I, I, I About food. So I was so fucking hungry. I was eating grass and shit. You know, like in normal people's life. That's why though, everybody has a great life because they had life like mine. Mm-hmm. They're eating grass and picking fruit. My mouth got canker sores from, from eating sour things or whatever, trying to survive and picking berries that are half edible, you know, off branches. So I would go to school and I was fucking starving. I was given no, no food or half a banana, a little, little piece of, of banana. That's it. Nothing else. Whole day. And no, then almost nothing for breakfast or anything. And then, you know, so I would go to school and I would want to, st- I was aggressive because of how I'm being treated, obviously, mm-hmm. and fucking starving, you know. So I would want to steal lunches from kids. But what I didn't, not being wanting to be vicious, I wouldn't take like your whole lunch. Mm-hmm. You had, say, a sandwich, a chips, an apple, a, a milk, and a, a candy bar or something, right? I would take one thing, an apple or or the candy bar or half your sandwich or something. I wouldn't even take it all. Right. So the problem is when you do this, like me, you do it to like five or six kids every single day. The teachers think that you're like some terrorizing all the kids because tons of kids are complaining that Damien is stealing their food. Right. So then I tell them what it is and why. And they told told my dad, um, my father. I don't like to go and call him dad. He's never fucking dad. So my my birth father, they tell him that, you know, your son, you know, needs to have more food. You need to give him food. And he says, I'm not going to. Because they thought that it was because he's poor. He was a jeweler at the time. He had plenty of money. He just chose not to. He just is a hateful person. I know some of, I, I, I believe is because of me being, intersex and him hating me never they never loved me they didn't care if i died mm. and practically treating me like i should die and they hoped that i died he left me one time at a, at a grocery store no, no, was, well yeah it's kind of like in like a walmart now kind of like where it's in between the grocery store and a in a apartment store sort of but anyways but he has left me he said oh, 
you need to be back in 15 minutes. Go ahead and, you know, go look at stuff. And I, I had no life. And we didn't allowed to, we're not allowed to watch TV or movies or anything. We did nothing. No birthdays. So to be able to just look at toys, not get anything, just be able to look at what other people had was like going to a mall or, 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 or um, a museum. Right. Like some people like to like it. You're not going to buy any of that stuff, but. Nice to look at. To yeah. Right. That, that, that's how tragic my life was, you know, like everyone else's wonderful life, you know, that they can judge me. So, so here I am, they just left me. But so the food thing, right? So the, 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 they go, wow, you know, your dad doesn't want you to eat, but we can't have you stealing fucking food from all these kids. Mm. So they told my, uh, my father, look, just sign this thing and we'll give him free lunch. He wouldn't sign it. He goes, I'm not signing that. Fucking wouldn't sign. For a free lunch. Right. Yeah. So then what happened is something more tragic. What they would do, because my life was so wonderful that people can judge me. So what the, so what they would do is they would wait till all, I would have to wait and be hungry and wait till all the kids that had money went, all the kids that had those free lunches went, and then whatever scraps was left from all that extra I could maybe have three milks and an apple or maybe two milks and a bag of carrots or whatever. But I would get whatever scraps or, or if they have a sandwich, maybe it was left over or something. Whatever scraps is left, they would kind of bunch it up and that's what I would get. Mm. Which I still appreciate because I was fucking starving. Right. But it just shows how these people judge, you know, what it's like to be me. Yeah. I've lived through more fucking trauma than most people could fucking emotionally deal with. Yeah. That's also why it turned me into a mild social or a high functioning sociopath being treated so fucking shitty. That also makes me realize how important it is to do the opposite. Right. To not treat people shitty because it fucks people up for life. And so I want to be a champion for kindness, not just do it when it's convenient or do it to to kind people. So I I realize it's something that I have to do as a way of life. And it's actually also the opposite of my life itself, how I was treated. You know the really fucked up thing though. I I, I hate when people like they're like they're they're white like me, and people that are of color and they'll go, "Well, I had a bad life too." You know what? I never had that much. I had a little bit of racism done to me from people of color and even from white people because they feel I'm not white enough. Right. Whatever fuck that is. But <laughs> but. But 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 I would say that in the long run, though, I actually experienced less bigotry from people of color than I experienced from white people. Of course, so, yeah. But <laughs> that makes perfect sense. I would to me. still say that most of my life, though, even with the horrific stuff I experienced, I still had white privilege. Yeah, like I I actually cut a guy physically with a knife, like I don't know if it's twelve or thirteen inches across his chest. Oh, jeez. In school, and they knew about it. He actually never came back. He was so fucking terrified of my, how crazy I was. Wow. And I got a week suspension. That's it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. do you think that an, a person of color could have done that and even ever gone back to the school themselves? No, they would have been uh, put in jail, tried as Prison. an adult. Like, <laughs> right, you're right, you're right. Exactly. Tried as an adult. Exactly. So I'm just, I brought a 40, yeah, 44 bulldog to school and got caught and the teacher called my father and actually said do you want me to call the police or my father i said call the police mm. and he goes i'm calling your father oh but my point what yeah white privilege yeah. They, t- they these kind of kids you know they, they they get um put in jail for for saying they're gonna stab someone with a pencil i brought an actual actual gun to school and not like a little gun like a 22 i brought a 44 to school you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that the the I, also, I know I also lived in a rough area. Maybe I would have done that in Canada or you know been somewhere. Might have been a different situation. But, yeah. But I bet you, even with the rough area I've up, if I would have been a person of color who cut kids, who brought you know a gun to school, I would the answer would not let's keep him in school. Right. Yeah. I eventually did get kicked out and put into a continuation school, but I I still was. Having a lot of privilege, so that's why I always feel like people like, oh, no, I don't, I have bad life too, and I'm like, yeah, but it really wasn't because of your color, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and even me with this, I had a fucking terrible life. In fact, it's probably you know, in some some ways, worse than a lot of people in with the kind of abuse 
then, then, then everyone of color doesn't experience that kind of abuse. But everybody of color has experienced a kind of abuse as societally that I don't experience. Yeah. So I think I think that I feel like that people when they, when they say this shit, but I think as an anarchist in general, we should be to me trying to understand all these oppressive dynamics and how, how important all of them are. Yeah, that's right. Because hierarchies like that like are unjust and they are unjust. <laughs> it's important to if we want to undermine them, we have to understand them. And that's why I said the two things that I try to do across all my my belief system is my anarcho-humanism and my relationship anarchism. And they're both how I react to others yeah, yeah. and understanding their value and how I do no harm, but also do good. It's not enough to just not do harm. Yeah. No, that's fair. I like that. Is there more we want to talk about or about your activism? Um, certainly um, welcome to. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> my other activism I, I do a lot of uh, um, was my uh, prehistory. Like I said, about I realized that anarchism um, is 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 in a sense my my ultimate goal. Mm. And I realized though it doesn't seem like anarchists are too welcomed, and it doesn't seem like we'll ever get people to grasp these hierarchy structures until we remove religion. Religion is like this instilled, accepted, supported hierarchy structure that has to be destroyed. Yeah. And so, or undermined, or at least explained to the. So I, that's where I started. Really, um, um, I turned atheist because of looking at the facts, hmm. and, and especially archaeology and uh, history. So I started, even though it wasn't my degree, and I'm not an academic in those things. I started becoming very proficient, right? Because, in fact, even impressing archaeologists and historians, so that, like how much I know, <laughs> right. How would you describe uh, like the transition from like uh, a direct action activist to like your uh, role as an educator? Well, I, I feel like they're almost the same in a sense. The fact that, but I, I see direct action in, um, in that sense before and now. Like I, I was kicked off of Facebook where I, I um, had almost a hundred thousand or something people with my different pages and groups and stuff following me. And listening to me, I had three different profiles. Everyone, you know, they wanted me to make another one. Anyways, right. but I got kicked off of there. Then I went to LinkedIn and I started making more um, archaeology and history and an anthropology because I really like that stuff. So I started making a lot more, in a sense, academic friends. I made more like atheism sort of friends, some anarchists, but more atheism friends on Facebook. I made more academic friends and humanitarian friends, that kind of stuff, more on LinkedIn. And I got kicked off of there too because they wouldn't even let me do any kind of activism. Mm -hmm. So they're like, "Oh, you're using the site how it shouldn't be used." I'm like, "Dude, I have all. I'm gaining followers. I had like eleven thousand or something. I'm, right. I'm gaining one one year or something. I mean, I'm gaining followers fast as shit. And 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 yet I'm doing all this supposed non-important stuff. And I told everybody on there, I'm an anarchist and uh, socialist and stuff. I was very open. But that's also why they didn't like me because. But so I, but I, what hurt me, though, was, was losing the academic people because I was really enjoying talking and interacting with them. Right. And giving them ideas that I have and, and you know, working back and forth with them. That, that, that was really a hard. And uh, then I um, was on um, Instagram. And I, before I had, I had not really done any activism because Instagram, I just kind of posted flowers or did whatever. It was just my own thing just to be me. I didn't, yeah. I didn't even follow. At the time, I didn't follow anyone. I had like, I don't know, maybe a thousand followers or something, but I didn't follow nobody because to me, this was just my Damien gets to just to be Damien and not have to think about nothing and just something beautiful or whatever. Right. But all of a sudden then when the thing got, you know, my, I get kicked off of those other two sites banned for life. Um, then I started being more activist on Instagram, which then I immediately got banned from there too for posting a thing with intersex. <clears throat> then I, um, have been on Twitter and I've only been there. I don't know, like maybe like let's say a year and a half. Or yeah, something. year, year and a half, something like that. I don't, I don't know exactly, but <clears throat> I, I had three hundred because I actually never post. I, I, I when I was on Facebook, it would auto post to Twitter. Right. Because <laughs> people complained that I wasn't on Twitter, but I, I looked at it and you can't. I like to talk a lot and I like to write a lot. So 
when Twitter says you can look at these really tiny things. I, I, my quotes are bigger than fit in there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I just for had, a long time it was only 140 characters on Twitter. I was, so. I was not interested in Twitter. I felt like it's too. It, it's like a. I was like, I don't even get the point. You can't hardly even talk on here. Yeah. So I didn't do it, but all of a sudden, when I had nothing else, then I now, now I'm at uh, seven thousand and something, <clears throat> very very quickly from three hundred, and uh, it's not because like some people, like this one guy, atheist was was uh, um, he's the anti woke atheist, which oh, I yeah. ended up blocking him, but <clears throat> he was saying he had fourteen thousand. Like, oh look, at you've been on here for a while and you haven't got anything. I said, you post stuff trying to get likes. You will delete stuff or do stuff and try to get things and get enough likes or whatever and ask questions. I don't do any of that. I do whatever the fuck I want, Mm -hmm. and I don't give a shit if it gets likes. I don't care if the people even look at it. I'm going to put what I want to put, period. I I don't think this is going to get likes. And if people like it, great. And if they don't, Well, I'm not saying I don't appreciate likes or don't (laughs) think it needs to be spread. I does. My ideas, I think, do need to be spread. But yeah. I'm just saying I don't do it with this mentality of trying to strategically get likes or trying to strategically only have these kind of friends or, or say current. I say the fuck I want. Yeah. <laughs> I have the friends who I have. I, I just don't care. I'd rather have a friend that has three three people following them than three million if it's not a good person. I don't fuck yeah, you then. Exactly. Give a shit about your fucking fame. Yeah. But that's I, I think I'm relationship anarchism. I, I care about quality. I care about people right. that they're doing good, get are good. I mean, that's really more important to me. But so, the, anyways, my 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 point is, how did I I transition? Is that um or why? Well, some was that I was keep getting knocked off these sites, but that's not really why I stopped. My mom died. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like I don't know, is it two years now or something? I'm not totally sure. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but when she died, I, I I had thought I felt powerful all the time powerful shit and strong and i thought i'd worked through all my childhoods or a lot of it maybe not all but a lot of it my childhood mm-hmm. abuse and the extreme abuse i went through and just all that the, my my fucked up life and not being loved and not being cared about and treated horribly and uh when she died it was like my whole childhood came rushing back and pounded into my brain again i'm yeah. seeing and thinking about being that kid again I just started crying all the fucking time. And I just couldn't do that at the same time of trying to be an activist. Two things. Either I'm too broken feeling and just d- d- like decimated inside and sad. I, d- I don't, I didn't want, it wasn't about my mom per se. It was remembering my life. I don't know. My PTSD came, came back or started hitting like super fucking hard. And I, I just didn't have like this strong desire or, or ability. I felt fragile. I just didn't, I didn't want to argue no more. I didn't want to talk to people. I don't want to talk to anybody, yeah. especially anybody unsafe to right. me. And um, then the other thing is I also always worry because I am a sociopath. And if I break too hard, I'm going to break bad. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to, to harm somebody physically or harm somebody emotionally. I'm very good at, at, strategically doing either physical right. or mental abilities to attack people. And I don't want to do that. And I don't want to make the excuse. Oh, well, you know, I, I was doing a bad time. And so I hurt people. My thought was if I'm at risk of that, you know, the best thing to do is not go outside. Yeah. The rest, yeah. Of, you know, is to, um, uh, I started smoking pot more. I just I I need to calm myself down. I need I need to eat safe people around me. I need to remove myself from toxic shit because I'm not in a good place. A for me, I'm feeling mm. broken, and then also I don't want to become hostile and toxic and start hurting people or whatever. Even if, even if I would be in a sense not thinking about it, I I, I realize the healthy person I'm trying to be that that's not a good thing. And um, also, I feel like I did it like 15 years of, of direct action where I would take on anybody. I'd go on the street, take anyone on. I'd argue with anybody. I argued with Ken Hovind on the street. I argued with Ray Comfort. I, I, I would take on philosophers, atheists. I talked to Matt Dillahunty. You know, I talked to R.R. Raw. I met them in public. I, I challenged R.R. Raw in public. 
I, um, we're sat, he sat down next to me and he said something I didn't agree with. I started challenging him. And then he's like, oh, man, I shouldn't have gone into philosophy. Yeah, because I'm better <laughs> at philosophy than you, so you probably shouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> And not that, not that I've, once again, I've never read a book on logic, just like atheism or anarchism or socialism. I haven't read books on this stuff. I just grasp things. I read a little, five books on axiology, but even then, I grasp way past the books. Mm-hmm. Because once I grasp the concept, my brain, which I'm, you know, gifted, my brain takes over and goes, oh, I see this and this and that and this and that and this, that connection. And there are people like, wow, you, like, in fact, even I have a, a video where I did it with a, um, formal doctorate guy who does axiology as his job right he's a formal axiologist uses so, as a social science in his work he does wow and, and and he actually can explain it in calculus and all this complicated stuff and he said wow you really get axiology <laughs> and i thought wow and if you knew that i don't even know all the stuff you do that i didn't need that to get where i'm at you'd be more impressed right but so that's the other thing, too, is I realized I had this gifted ability and I thought, well, I could sure use it for myself. Right. I could use it for myself and make myself famous or, or, or make money off of it. But I did the opposite. I started realizing I want to give it away for free because I really believe that education should be free. I believe that I have this gift. I have this. What if I had the? it's like I the told a person, what if you had the, the, the resource that could save the world and you did it? Only for you. Right. And you hoarded it and kept it. Hoarded it. it. Do you really think that you should feel like a good person? I realized I have this resource. I have this ability to understand. I have this this, uh, thing that is different. And I realized it in college the most because I would just be able to blow away people with doctorates all the time. And I didn't want to be selfish. I didn't. I wanted to use what I had, all of me, for the whole world. That's why I draw pictures for free. I do it for free. That's why I gave my education for free, my my philosophy, my my psychology, my humanism, my atheism, my anarchism, my socialism, all of it for free to the world. All my time, 15 years of my life, I, I spent all kinds of money, thousands of dollars. I flew different places to conventions and, and activism events. I did a lot, gave away money to people, not for my own benefit and not like I'm rich. I'm fucking ba- barely making it now, yeah. which is another reason why I need to, in a sense, transition to not doing this because I'm right. need to. i getting older. I'm 50 and I need to have some kind of an income. You know, my, my wife is has been supporting me also, and uh, she's going to have trouble doing that real soon. So, but it's it's really not even that why I stopped doing it so hardcore. It's really because of my childhood coming back. That just, mm. it, it's, and, and I was, you you remember, I, I was a lot of times I'd be like, I was crying all day. I would be no day I didn't cry. I'd cry yeah. every single day for like, I don't know, a year or two. I don't even remember now how long, but. And it's now not like that, but I just feel sadness like creeping in or, or just the feeling, you know, of my childhood. But it's not as intense as it was. But I mean, you understand what I went through was fucking horrid. <laughs> and I chose, though, to be different. And that's to me, the biggest story of my life is not what I went through, but who mm-hmm. I've chosen to be. And that's why I, I, I think it's important too, like you. You've chosen to be a good person. It doesn't matter where you started. What matters is what you chose. Yeah. yeah. It's just harder when you're someone like me to choose right. this. Yeah. But that doesn't, to me, it, it doesn't make it any less valuable when you're a good person because of any reason. Right. That's why I think that some people like have this, uh, you know, goalpost thing that if you didn't do this, then you're not an anarchist or if you if you don't do this, you're not a good enough socialist or you haven't done enough activism or maybe my direct activism wasn't enough because I didn't do it often enough in as many places. Right. Yeah. You know? Everybody's got their their line where they'll say, well, you should have done more. But. I did as much as I could yeah. and I did it as often as I could. And I and even physically, because like I said, I, I, I sometimes I did it in a wheelchair. Yeah, because I couldn't walk and I still went out in a wheelchair and did it. I have activism events where I, I went out in a wheelchair because I wasn't going to stop trying to help the world. So right. I, I've given a lot of me 
And I, I, I don't want people to, to just glorify me. I want you to feel responsible that you need to give a lot. Yeah. Do what you can. Do everything Do that you right. can. And, and understand, too, I, I don't I don't. I don't like this this thing too, where we put people down because they only do online activism. If that's yeah. all you can do, and you do that, I'm fucking proud that you're doing it. Yeah. If all you're you can something. do is to come into my inbox, you know, in private, and tell me how wonderful I am to make me feel a little bit better, that's still good. Whatever I and like I said, it's not like I'm a person who hasn't only does online activism. I've done it all across the board. Right. And I've, I've been death threats. I put my life in danger. And I still appreciate people who do even just a little because they may not be in a place where they can do that. Yeah. I don't think ever. I think it. if we stop seeing it, that it's this group thing, this solidarity thing, I think is the problem. Mm-hmm. And they're like somehow. But I think it's this it's this hierarchical structure. This one's better than that one. I'm right. like, we're all in the, in the same war. Yeah, we're all right. trying. We all matter. It's like if you take a rock and you put it inside your shoe and you try to run. At first, it's probably not that bad. Try it tomorrow. Same rock, same place. Try to run now. It gets worse. Every day it gets worse. It gets bruised. It gets thin. Now you're starting to walk weird. Your knees gotten to hurt. Your ankles hurting. This was a rock, right? No big deal. Well, the same thing, I think, opposite. That support of removing that rock. If you All you do is remove that rock from my shoe while I'm running. I can run further. I yeah. can do more. We do more together. I, I, I'm serious about this solidarity thing. That's why I say I support people who are good humans. We are on the same path. Maybe we don't have the same schedule. <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we don't all even have the same goals. But if our goal is to, is in general, though, to bring up humanity, then we're on the same path. That's also why I, I don't really say that I'll work with people that their goal is the opposite of this. Right. If 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 you're if you say that you're an anarcho nihilist and your goal is to burn everything, you're not on the same path. Right. Seems like that's a whole other path. <laughs> Somewhere like, else. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no. And I, I I it's not that I'm against having friends that have differing views. I have a lot of friends that have differing views. Right. And but I still speak the truth. I, I, I don't, in a sense, protect my um, people from me being an anarchist. I don't protect them from me being a socialist. I don't protect them from me being an atheist or an anti-religionist. I right. also don't use it to abuse people. Well, if there's anything else we need to talk about, then we can finish up. And if not, then... Okay, well, I'll real quick. Uh, so I, 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 my, my big thing was I transitioned, right? Like I told you, I, I, I stopped uh, doing it maybe like, I don't know, a year or so ago. I'm not even sure. I, yeah, I, it's got to be about a year. I, I'm just doing teaching and education. What I mean by that, about my direct action before, is like I said, I would challenge, I would debate, I would, I, anybody. I didn't even care. I, I'm done with that. I, I don't, I don't want to debate nobody. I don't mind having a talk where, like you know, we did with um, Nikki, where we right. talk to someone you know reasonably, and we have some disagreements. That's not the same thing. I'm talking about where the show this is a disagreement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Where the, the goal uh, is to to, to fight. I. Uh, you know what? I, I'm just not interested. Yeah, fair. I, I want to be supportive. And like I said, too, about realizing religion. So I realized the problem is religion. How do we get rid of, rid of religion? And so I realized that a lot of atheists will say religion is false. Yeah, but how much of, it, of religion do they actually know? Because mm-hmm. I, th- I felt like that I don't know that everyone has to, but I felt I needed to really understand. <clears throat> so I have been studying for over 10 years archaeology and history and DNA and animal husbandry and anthropology and, um, you know, all this different stuff to fit in land movements and migrations and, and um, languages. I mean, I, I studied a lot of stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I wanted to understand the whole corpus of religion. And uh, it it's... And then, and then I, I, I wanted to give it back to people. So I tried to package it into, you know, segments or into understanding that's easier. Right. And then give it to people. And then even like my art, I have tons of art where it's related to archaeology and land movements and DNA and all kinds of stuff like on one picture. But then I put like 30, you know, links. You can go look it up yourself. I want you to. Right. <laughs> And so that's where I'm basically doing now is I want to, you know, in a sense, teach atheism and humanism, you know, the thinking. I want to teach philosophy, how to think better, how to, how to analyze things better. 
how to, how to, and then I want to teach, you know, the, the prehistory and so you can understand and grasp why religion is actually false or why there's like, that's like we, we were arguing with Nikki where she said that hierarchy is a normal thing. I'm like, it's not though. Right. Yeah. Evol- it's, <laughs> evolutionarily, it isn't. And even if you thought it is, I can show you when it actually started. And it's not just my personal opinions or an anarchist opinion. You can go look it up in college books. It's yeah. after agriculture. Hunter gatherers did not really do that, right? And 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 it's like I, I made a comment about slavery, and the reason why because I wanted to show that all that oppressive stuff really starts after agriculture. Before agriculture is not really slavery. It's like about eleven thousand, ten thousand years of slavery. Well, because yeah. twelve thousand years to eleven thousand years is agriculture. So about the t- about the time that that starts, people start accumulating wealth. And realizing yeah, you can have other people accumulate wealth and you can just take it from them. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know, both in slavery and in domination of land and, and resources, yeah. you realize I can get more, more, more. And to me, that led very, very quickly, but not right away. It led very quickly, I, I believe, about 7,000 years ago, certainly seven to five, you know, to capitalism and the state and oppressive, you know, empires and all that. In fact, we're, we're doing videos on that. We did help me, you and me. I really appreciate your help. You, we we did you know my history of religion yep. from you know um, basically uh, three hundred thousand, hundred thousand, whatever the pre animism, animism, all the way down to four thousand. Yeah. And we did did different videos, and I have blogs for all them and links for all them to help people grasp and understand this. And then then I wanted to once I did that, I also realized. Even anarchists and socialists don't seem to grasp like right. how states started and how kings came about and what it was like, you know, from the beginning. That right. it was never good. It's like people go like, oh, make America great again. Uh, I'm sorry. When the fuck is America <laughs> great? <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> the right. land theft part or the slavery part or the no women's rights? Or what what exactly fucking part are you talking about? Yeah. Oppressive structures are are part of the whole thing it's kind of well, been right. there so, and you've been working with that about mesopotamia and yeah. and we started before any of that started and we went all and we're going all the way to where it basically it becomes to an end and then other societies take over right and and then from there they steal those oppressive ideas which they don't realize they steal those oppressive ideas and then continue them. and then today we continue and we call it statism yeah that's right <laughs> so but, yeah yeah it's not the natural order. It's been an imposed system it, ever since agriculture, like you say. After agriculture, certainly. And, they, and they, it says it right there. It says power, hierarchies, social you know, uh, oppression, bigotry, racism. All of it yeah. is a new shit. It's not inherently human to be do this, to be sexist. In fact, even when, when um, from 9,000 to 7,000 in uh, Europe, there used to be probably about three genders, at least. There might be right. more than that, five genders. But th- there wasn't this, it's after 5,000 that from then and down, they make a two-gender system. Hmm. And then all the empires forced that shit. So, I mean, it, and just like from 7,000 to 5,000 also, there's a genetic drop because of paternal clans, male-based clans, killing off or, or in maybe even because eventually by 4,000 for sure they're having eunuchs and stuff. So maybe in cutting off people's genitals, don't know. Somehow they're not letting all the men have sex with the women. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they're doing that by removing their genitals, just by enslaving them and keeping them somehow away or killing them. And may actually have been all the above. Yeah. Bits and pieces of all. I'm generally the, all the, like you said before, you went, well, couldn't it have been all that, Damien? When it was the, 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 <laughs> the that one uh, video we're doing, where they're 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 sending off emissaries, they're grabbing new territory, and they're trying to inspire the territories that they're, they're meeting to be like them, and then they're kind of co-opting them. Yeah, and you're like, couldn't it have been all of them? I'm like, actually, Corey, I agree with you. I think it was all of them. Probably all of them. Probably all of them. That that would, to me. It, from what it looks like and why it's so hard to figure out exactly is because I don't think that the one answer is the answer. Right. <laughs> so, and I think the same thing that 
And that's why people don't grasp that it's not that hierarchy started and then later a whole bunch. No, almost everything, racism, everything almost happened right then. And their problem is the people coming from the north were whiter skinned. Mm. Everywhere they went, and hit, these people understand, Europe was a bunch of black people or certainly very dark skinned, dark eyed, dark haired people. And mm -hmm. as a majority, especially all the southern um, areas for sure, Germany and down. <sighs> Anything maybe north could have been a little bit different, but still very dark. Right. And then all these white people came in, and now people think that's the land of the white people. Right. But actually, those people come from Russia and Siberia or Asia. Now, the Asian people also, like the Han Chinese, are also this white variant. But they're not, in a sense, the exact same. It's like the Asians and the Europeans come from a source that's light mm -hmm. from the north. Right. And then they split from Siberia. One goes down to China, sort of, and one goes over to Europe and goes down to the Middle East. While the Middle East people are light-skinned. Uh-huh. Okay? It's people movements. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. yeah. It is nothing. And it's just, and they all come from Africa originally, so they all were dark-skinned. So this belief in somehow, that we know, we're, we're, the, the black people are different. Wrong. And right. It's just this. It's like a, the, the science proves like 99.9% .9 all humans on the earth are the same. And how about this? 70,000 uh, to, to 78,000 or something years ago, all humans on the earth share an ancestor in Southern Africa. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Does it mean that that's all you have, but you have at least that? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what do they say? Like, uh, there's more genetic diversity within these so-called racial groups than mm. there is between racial groups. <laughs> well, and, and people just don't grasp this. And like I said, anyways, that Europeans never owned Europe. They colonized it. Yeah. You are, you should be back in Siberia where you belong. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Go back home. <laughs> Go back to Russia. But so, but it also doesn't mean that Russia now owns all of Europe, you know? No, no. <laughs> Colin, I said, there's another thing too I really got that I, I've, I've said to you before uh, online especially I really don't like that everybody has this like the Americas Canada America right North America because they mm. I, I feel it's weird they don't say South America it means the same but it does but somehow the indigenous people stops at the American border right right all these people that are that are brown past that not indigenous bullshit they to act like they're no different than Canada is just ridiculous. So, but it, here's the other fact. All of those people come from Siberia and Russia mm -hmm. or the North Arctic or Northern China area, which is still in, towards the, the steppes and the Arctic. So all those people, guess what? In the Arctic, that think that Russia is Russia. Russia colonized them. Right. They need land back. The Chucky, all, all all the Arctic people. In fact, they're, they're Russia now is giving away free land. Yeah, I saw that. They, they, they don't even, but see, they don't even have reservations because they don't acknowledge they own land at all. Right, right. That which is actually a problem, really. Yeah. Should be to do it. And I don't understand how so many leftists don't see the problem with this. Yeah. Or anarchists <laughs> don't see a problem with this. Like, how can you say land back and then they're like, well, Russia? Oh, all that land's theirs. Oh, really? Yeah. All the Arctic is theirs. All those indigenous people live there were oppressed and had their language taken from them and, and their religion taken from them. You know, all those ones are forced Christianity. Be, uh, yeah. Sure. And, yeah. yeah. And now Russia is saying that in both places or the indigenous land, the far east Russia and the northern Arctic, right? They want to give it away for free and have a bunch of non you know, indigenous people move up there and populate it so their people are up there because they feel it's not enough population. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm like, imagine if Canada or America said, you know, all these indigenous lands, like these reservations or whatever, yeah. let's just start giving that land away for free. And people yeah. can just come in and, and settle our colonizers, you know. How would kinda, people feel? <laughs> kind of how the, the uh, north, like the prairies got colonized in the first place. That's well, kinda... that's how all, all everywhere <laughs> yeah. got, in, the, including South America. The people that came in, you know, they 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 don't grasp that that happened there too, whether it's the Spanish or whoever. So, but I just feel like the two things: a, why is it past the American border? Everybody doesn't give a fuck. 
yeah. about the indigenous people. That's horseshit. Yeah. Why is it that past Alaska, when you start going over, when those people have direct links thousands of years, how the hell, in fact, the Nadane language, you know, comes from central or, or northern Siberia. Okay. Probably, they would, they would say eleven to 6,000, but I think it's probably closer to seven to 6,000. But Okay. But certainly, long time, those people yeah. over there. And uh, to act like that, that somehow that that, once again, is an anarchist, that stupid border. <laughs> means anything that yeah. like native land land back which i'm totally for and then you say that oh but that's russia so once you, the little fake border right is an anarchist that shouldn't mean anything anyway that fake border now that now it's not theirs right we shouldn't care well russia doesn't 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 acknowledge them yeah and shouldn't that be a problem for you absolutely yeah. <laughs> at least it is to me but I know I'm weird because once again, I, I, it's not like I'm saying I'm pro Ukraine that, that I think that they're perfect and we should go defend them with, with the last you know human life. I also th- don't don't support Russia. I feel like Russia's an imperialist, Americans imperialist, China's imperialist. In fact, here's the news to me: if you're a capitalist, you're likely an imperialist. So that's what that means. That guess what? So is Ukraine. Yeah. So the fact that they don't aren't actively doing it to the others, they're doing it to their internal. I, I still feel that is a similar thing. Whether you're depressing your own people or other people, both are not good in the similar thing. Yeah, that's right. To me, so I don't. I I, I want I want the war to end, but it doesn't mean I'm pro Russia, and I want I I want people to be able to defend themselves. But it doesn't mean I'm pro Ukraine. Right. Yeah. I know that just rocks people's world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it's a, it's anyways, a good... I, I, I hope that I, I uh, you know, got to get out uh, enough stuff to, you know, inspire people to think more. Because that's yeah. really, you know, I realize the door of reason opens many times. People act like, you know, I achieve reason. I'm good. I'm, you know, wrong. Wrong. In you, fact, me, yeah. I, I constantly am open to being shown. Like I like saw this one thing that says, you know, are you ever wrong? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I am sometimes. But the difference about me is I welcome the news so that I can now be right. I don't want another moment of being wrong. I begrudgingly accept when I'm wrong. <laughs> Not me. I, 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 mean, I, I don't, I, obviously, I, I don't like to be wrong. Right. Because it doesn't feel good to be wrong. But I would rather know and understand how to think right. Because yeah. it matters. I'd rather be correct after being wrong. Yeah. Hell yeah. We're, we're <laughs> staying wrong. <laughs> yeah. We're staying wrong by choice. Oh, no, no. Yeah. So I, I think that, you know, a lot of people can do a lot of good. And I think that we do a lot of good all the time and we need to keep it up. It's not a one time thing. And I'm not saying, like I said, my activism, direct activism, where I'm like combating the world, that's over. But mm-hmm. me, you know, wanting to help, that's not changed. Right. So I'm, I'm more in my education phase. Right on. Of my activism. And where can people go to find the education you provide? So you can go to Damien dot, or sorry, Damien Marie at hope.com. And my um, uh, email is Damien dot Marie dot at hope at gmail.com. So I have, they're both just my name. Perfect. So, and I have all kinds of links and stuff on there. And I, I really wish that people would check the stuff out. I mean, it, it, go, go research what I say. I, I think that you'll be pleasantly surprised that you'll learn more than you thought. Yeah. And there's sources for everything. <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> right on. Well, thanks again for your time. Right on. I All right, folks, that. that's everything. Thanks for watching and or listening. Remember to share this show with your friends and on the social media site that you use the most. Thank you to everyone who supports this show on Patreon. I really appreciate it, and it helps me spend more time on this and my other projects. If you want to contribute, you can do that at patreon.com slash skeptical leftist, or you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash skeptical, skeptical lefty. If you can't contribute financially, then a five-star rating or a and a review on the podcast app of your choice or one of the podcast review sites like Podchaser would be great. If you want to find more from me, then check out the show notes for links to all my stuff or check my website, skepticalleftist.com. There you can check out my other show, From Many People's Strength, which is a podcast about Saskatchewan politics. Uh, you can check out the videos that I do with my friend Damien Marie at Hope and all my old content from the Brainstorm podcast. You can also find the links to my Discord, Reddit, and Twitch. 
Uh, you can contact me through my website or by emailing mindofaskepticalleftist at gmail.com. My Twitter is at Skeptical Lefty, and my Facebook page is The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist. Thanks so much for watching or listening, and try to get involved with something in your area, and let's all work to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm.